Hello, Star Wars fans. Hey, you know, there's just 307 days until Christmas 2022. Oh, oh, oh. and Santa got another early gift uh, for Christmas the over the weekend. Uh, uh, early, it was not supposed to come until May, but Amazon uh, stopped by over the weekend. And look, I got my new uh, Force Effects uh, lightsaber here. For uh, It's uh, the Ray Skywalker uh, lightsaber that turns on by turning the... There, oh, 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 and you can see like it lights up in on the inside there when you when you light it up, you get that flash of blue and green. Oh, 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 oh I love it. This is fantastic. So, uh, early gift. This is really a solid piece. It's all uh, steel. It's really heavy. It's fantastic. Oh, oh, Roland, good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate it. And uh, we've got my friend Jason here. Uh, good morning, Jason. How are you? Hey, morning. I'm great. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. It's been a bit of a hectic morning. We had to uh, uh, go pick up the RV, was getting some warranty work done on it, got mm -hmm. it back. It's a beautiful day here in central Ohio today, and uh, it was nice. We've got the day off work, went down, uh, enjoyed some sunshine, took the dogs for a drive. Everybody's happy. It's <laughs> It's good. I'm just, I'm just hoping these 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 little kids sleep in. I'm like, come on, guys, you guys got to keep sleeping. I got I got to go on Star Wars Santa show, and and so far it's working. Hey, and my friend X Wing is here. Uh, I sent the Razor Crest to X Wing, and apparently it's going by uh, snail. It's <laughs> I sent it uh, Friday, and I think they're not saying he's going to get it until this coming Saturday. So it's mm. going to take over a week to get out there uh, to X-Wing. So uh, hopefully that comes early so that X-Wing can get that. And Meg's here. Good to see you. Hi, Meg. Uh, I, I watched her video today about the Bad Batch. Um, uh, have you seen uh, the news about the Bad Batch? There was a, a, a thing that came out that said that we were going to get a big Bad Batch uh, reveal this week. And then they retracted it. It was complete nonsense did you catch all that I, I i saw people telling me bad batch is coming out next week and i was like no it's not no, <laughs> no. I, I, well, I didn't even look any further i was like i just don't care at that point it's not coming out next week yeah i was gonna see so we were told that there was a way to change the chat to be members only and i was looking to see if it was a way that i could set it so i was going to I log into the uh, into the dashboard here, and I don't see. We'll have to. Oh, here we go. Who can send messages? Here we go, oh. folks. Uh, it, right now, it's set to anyone. We can change it to subscribers, and we can change it to members. So, uh, what I'm going to do this is this is great. I'm going <laughs> to uh, uh, set it to subscribers only. Oh, 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 oh subscribers oh, only. There day. you go. That's right. It's subscriber only day today. Uh, and uh, if you want to put a chat in the message here, as Jason and I are uh, visiting, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel. You, it, you know, do that's that. as painless as it gets. That's mm -hmm. you, you don't have to give us any money. You don't even have to like the video. You just got to subscribe. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. Very, very easy. Very, very easy. So, uh, oh, look. I didn't do that, but uh, it did it for me. Chat is now open to everyone. And so <laughs> <laughs> it's doing what it wants. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I, I I do know that uh, right after this, I'm meeting with Russell. I saw your chat that uh, Santa's singing this, uh, uh, right? The intro song. Uh, it cracks me up because it sounds like Michael Jackson to me, like uh, <laughs> little Michael Jackson. Yeah, uh, people don't people movie. underestimate your octave range, and I always say that about you. I've always said that about you since I first met you. <laughs> oh, well, mm -hmm. I'm meeting with Russell right afterwards, and we're going to be working on the new intro mm -hmm. and uh, try to get that uh, this this week, so that that'll be ready. And we're also going to put a uh, put together some uh, background so that this will change as well. And I'm doing my live streams. We'll have a different background. Uh, Santa's workshop will have uh, uh, toys, all kinds of good fun, and so that's that's coming right along. So, uh, you know, I I it sounds like gibberish to me too, Meg. It, it, it's 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 Meg, Meg, Meg. Oh no, 
That, that's all it does the whole time. It just says, Meg, oh no. Let's, <laughs> listen, listen again next time. You'll definitely hear it. Oh, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, so the Bad Batch, the only thing that we have is back from August when Disney's, uh, uh, what is that, uh, Instagram posted the Bad Batch May 4th, 2022, mm -hmm. season two. That's all we have. So yeah. uh, that would be, uh, so the question that we have, and you know, we play the, uh, the predictions game every week where we put out, uh, you know, what's going to be in the next episode. Are we going to do two predictions games a week or, or do we do predictions for Kenobi only? Uh, uh, what's it going to do when we've got more than one Star Wars show coming out? Uh, uh, oh. I'm spoiling. I'm spoiling the hell out of that out of that show. So so do the other one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's gonna True. be too easy. True. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to get a perfect score, you just watch Jason's uh, show. You, you no, I, I actually. I actually do have a ton. Of, I know a ton, and I have more questions from knowing more. So it's actually, I think, just going to, if you follow the spoilers, it's just going to change the um, what the questions happen to be. Yes. To be honest yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's, and I did see this, make um, Right. So go to makingstarwars.net, and uh, you can see all the uh, leaks as they come out. I know you're kind of scheduling them out. Don't want to. Don't want to put too much out there just at once. Uh, yeah, I've been sitting on this stuff since like early in the summer or some of it. And it's like, and I was like, you know what? I want to wait till we get down to down to Kenobi times. Yeah. Because if you talk about things too early, like I talked about Mando so early the first time, nobody cared. Everybody's like, well, that's never coming out. Yeah. And then and then Mando came out and people were like, oh, well, this is happening. And I was like, dude, I told you that like nine months ago. Right. So, so I, I yeah. Sprinkle it uh, here and there. Like yeah. A you little seasoning. Start. Right, mm -hmm. uh, it's it's great, uh, and so yeah, I did make. I saw your crosshair theory. So there's a there is a uh, promotional poster that's got two crosshairs on it, mm -hmm. essentially. Right, you you have crosshair uh, at the top of the poster, and at the bottom there is what is theorized to be Omega wearing crosshair uh, uh, armor. Or at least her, name, her new name is Ingrown Hair. There's cross hair and ingrown hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So uh, if that's the deal, uh, is so there's there's all kinds of theories. Is is crosshair going to sacrifice himself for uh his his brothers, and then Omega wears uh his helmet or a, a variation of it in tribute to her fallen brother. Uh, to step into his shoes, or is it uh, just uh, just a print mistake? Yeah, or was it somebody going? We don't want to put a little girl on a boy's toy, and what was the quick <laughs> last minute fix? I mean, that that could be on the table too. I mean, all of the there's all of that, all of that is is a potential like potentiality here, and why that happened. I think it looks terrible though. I don't know why they would, if that's what they're doing, it, that's not, that, that seems like very bad design from the Filoni side. Not, Filoni's not really handling the animation directly anymore, but I, I think Filoni would, wouldn't let that happen. Yeah. I mean, it would change. It would, there would be something different. There would be something that commemorated it and, and evolved it. It wouldn't just be, I'm wearing his same helmet and then now we're both on the same package. It's just, it's puzzling. I I can see uh, both statements being true. Mm -hmm. I can see perhaps uh, Crosshair sacrificing himself. As Meg said in her video, he realized he's just a cog in the machine. They don't care about him. And so he gets disenfranchised with, uh, with the Empire. And yeah. at some point when uh, his brother's lives are on the line, he sacrifices himself. He sort of already did that kind of thing. He didn't sacrifice himself, but he did save his help to save his brothers uh, and saw a different side of them and all of that. So, um, you know, he was he was involved in in saving Omega for sure uh, when he uh, pretty much shot a harpoon like down into the the water to catch and pull her up to the surface before she drowned. 
So, I mean, he's already kind of done that kind of thing, but I think it very well could be a misprint and he might sacrifice himself. And yeah. I, I, and and I've heard Rob talk enough now to know that I, I don't put anything out of the realm of possibility of on these misprints. Uh, mm -hmm. Like the, uh, what was it? Solo, solo on solo shirt design where yeah where we've got the logo and and the logo <laughs> and the logo yeah well if, if we did entertain that that possibility right if, if we if we go okay let's just let's just like really lay into it and say that's what's happening it would be weird that such a big thing would happen number one early on and number two early enough to make it onto the package because usually something that becomes a big story element later on in in a season would never would never be there. So it would have to happen like in the very first episode, probably or the very first two episodes. And it's also makes me think that that won't happen because it would have been a better ending to the first season. That would have like really made the end the the end of the first season better had that happened then, and they didn't do it, which makes me think that they have a bigger plan for the character. I hope. Uh, well, uh, and, so, and uh, yeah, I, I, it's really hard because um, I, I have a different opinion on things than most people do. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm perfectly fine with uh, where his story arc is going uh, mm -hmm. and, and seeing him go back to the Empire at the end. And uh, as Meg said, she her theory that Crosshair has begun to defect uh, has certainly planted a seed uh, that, that finale planted a seed in Crosshair. He did help save Omega. Uh, he was there. He still, though, feels uh, distant from his brothers. He, uh, where Omega said, "You know, you're you're my brother, Crosshair," and uh, it brought tears to my eye. I, I mean, it it, yeah. it was an emotional moment for me. Uh, I thought I thought that was really really good. And he is yet to really step back in to say that. Uh, his brothers didn't um, leave him. He still sees it that way. His, he still sees that uh, they all turned on him. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I just don't see it that way. Um, this th this is basically like when you get down to it, it's the um, callous model. But there's right. a little bit closer connection. You know what I mean? Where at first he is the really big bad guy mm -hmm. serving the empire, the company man, if you will. And then the seeds get planted, and then as time goes on, the contradictions continue to reveal themselves, and then they realize they were wrong. That's that's most likely the the story here, right? I mean, it's the callous model. Yeah. Oh, well, and that. So will he? Will he become? Uh, right. The what was the the code name he used? Um, oh shoot! When he was spying, I think it was uh, Dirty Dog Two. <laughs> no, that wasn't dirty dog too. That that was a that was a trucker I heard one time on a CB. <laughs> oh my goodness! And Meg mentioned the prototype armor. Um, yeah, I let's see, I've got that prototype. I also have to say, Meg make, make, make made a comment about like Revenge of the Sith. I got to say, George Lucas and Lucasfilm back then completely different than to what they do now. So my there's take. the prototype armor for folks that haven't followed along and uh, Meg brings up here. I really want to see Omega wear this. This was the original concept art. Again, for anybody that hasn't seen this, it's a, it was the prototype for the super troopers. And uh, when, before Boba Fett was like Boba Fett, uh, it was a concept art that came out. And then uh, they built the, the set that Boba Fett wore like in parades and stuff like that. Go watch that, uh, that, that docu-series on Boba Fett. It's really, really good. There's some great stuff in there. Uh, but this was the prototype armor. And uh, they just released this again. Uh, Hasbro did the uh, prototype uh, trooper. Uh, so, and, and we saw this helmet in Sid's office in Bad Batch Season 1. And, and so it's all been theorized with uh, Alpha and Omega, Boba Fett Alpha, uh, Omega being Omega, <laughs> yeah. uh, that uh, maybe she would wear the white prototype armor. And I, I uh, my friend Will Morgan from uh, Meta Egg kind of planted the seed, and I am 100% on board with that as well. Um, look, I, um, let's see if somebody put it in the chat yet. Let me get caught up here uh, because <laughs> he was callous model. Good call. Yes. What was it? What was the term? What was the term? Um, 
Oh, shoot. Uh, but uh, it's very well, it, it is possible that maybe Crosshair would start leaking information out to uh, the the Bad Batch that, mm. that you know, the Empire is going to go here, the Empire is going to be there, they're on to you, that kind of thing. So, sure. Um, yeah. yeah do, and, do, you, do you think when this show ends, do you think we, we get like... Re- um, like Rex and and um, the two guys he's with in Rebels. Do you think we end up with him going into like retirement after this? Do you think that's like when he goes out into the desert, or do you think that they we have the opinion that they've been in, in retirement, but they really are just chilling that week or having a little bit of a downtime when when we see him in Rebels, you know, on that ATTE walking around like. Well, and will they? Will what will they do with the Empire Strikes Back? You know, Rex on um, on uh, uh, Echo Base. Yeah, Echo Base. <laughs> right, right. What 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 are they going to do with that? Are are we going to see? Maybe some of them do retire. Some don't. Some die. Um, yeah. That's that's very possible. And then uh, Omega. As as Meg mentioned, she's definitely going to outlive the Bad Batch. The question is, what what will happen with the Bad Batch themselves? Um, I could see Crosshair uh, dying. I thought he might die in ep- in season one. Uh, I could see him dying in season two. And and remember that they caught um, uh, Rambo, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> they caught him at the end of uh, the season. So uh, we've got to go rescue rambo yeah uh, th- that's coming um yeah um any, any you have anything before i read meg's comment here because I, 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 just I, just i was just thinking right now that it may should capitalize on may the fourth and she should do Meg the fourth and she should turn that into something big for herself <laughs> and just steal all of may the fourth thunder i just give me my brain right now <laughs> That's that's not too hard since Star Wars uh, Lucasfilm doesn't really do anything with it. They so, won't do anything you know. with it. They don't know what it's to do. Though. <laughs> May, May, May could go in and uh, honey or one of those programs to get T-shirt coupon codes and share them herself. <laughs> it's it's an open date. You might as well use it. Right, right. Uh, the Omera uh, being Omega, um, I don't I don't buy it. I think they're two separate characters. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think so either. I, I, but but one thing I will say is that like, oh, like that's I, right. I wanted to ask you too, when when we see them releasing like like the white armored Boba Fett stuff, is that do you think that's like a last opportunity to sell that version before it becomes something more solidified in in fan culture, or do you think that is actually a sign that that's not going to happen because they're doing that? Like, well, because you, you follow you, you follow the products more than I do, so I'm not right. exactly sure what the trends have been for the last couple of years with that kind of stuff. No, that's a really really good point. Like they did use this armor in Rebels, um, mm-hmm. and, and we did have like the Super Troopers. They were the Mandalorians that joined the Empire, and so right. they were. Uh, it was exactly uh, the purpose that these uh, Super Trooper came from, yeah. except except they were Mandalorians wearing the uh empire so the white armor has been used in that context but uh you know the what what hasbro's really kind of failed at is producing rebels merch like we don't have uh really a rebels a vintage collection line at all mm-hmm. uh the the rebels um black series line is is needs needs Complete and redone. Like, I have a theory about that. I have a theory about that. Yeah, they're, they're going to be making that stuff in about six months. When once we start to get towards Ahsoka, and so they probably were told, "Chill on 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 Ezra and all of the Rebel stuff. You're going that's going to have its day. I bet you that's why. You, you know, you, you might be onto it there because, uh, and and Meg mentioned uh, on uh, I think her video Saturday, mm-hmm. and I've been saying this for some time. If you haven't watched Rebels, and this is coming from a guy who watched the first half of of season one and and checked out, I was like, no, this show is not for me. I don't like the animation. I don't like the characters. Uh, uh, Space Aladdin is horrible. I, uh, I and I didn't care even for uh, the the big blue guy. I was like, no, this is all bad. And I checked out. 
I'm here to tell you guys, and, and Meg has as well, do yourself a favor, power through season one, set in for some of the best Star Wars you'll ever get seasons two through four. It's just a, a fantastic. I, I so. started watching it again this week, actually. I started it. I started. I watched the first nine episodes in like one day, and the 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 uh, thing that has struck me because when I first when I first watched it, I actually did enjoy it. I didn't like Ezra's uh, Ezra speaking out loud, speaking his thoughts constantly, the monologuing. I was like, this is this is really dumb. When you see past the tropes of the Disney XD kind of format, you do get really smart Star Wars. That's, everything is very thought out. All of the story elements are really well done. It's the it's great Star Wars storytelling. The format in which it was released is the only flawed aspect to it. But once you just accept that part of it, and then you go in with what they're doing, you're like, oh, this is actually pretty rich, and 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 it's yeah. it's very it's very good. Well, and I've I, some of the things, and you mentioned Ahsoka and uh, Meg, and I have also talked about this a lot. Mm -hmm. The Ahsoka emblem. <laughs> comes directly from the Lothal Temple. The yes. Lothal Temple is, is featured prominently in Rebels. Lothal is where, of course, Ezra is from. Mm -hmm. um, and and, I, and Mark, I saw Mark's comment. Look, they did have a, a Black Series line of Rebels characters, but uh, those... Murder uh, Hornet! I, was, I heard <laughs> Murder Hornet. <laughs> yeah, they're up to... I, I have a funny story about the tool he's using. I'll tell you in a minute. But uh, the Black Series line, what I was saying, Mark, is that they could uh, stand to update those. They've got a lot of the, the modern printing things that I think the Black Series oh, line yeah. can be improved on. And 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 as we get closer to this, as, as you just said, Jason, uh, I think it would be uh, good timing to re-release them. And then the Vintage Collection... And there's been a push amongst vintage collectors mm -hmm. to to go down this Rebels uh, route and, and release some of these characters. I would love to see it. I just don't know that they can get enough attention to Rebels to release them like on Rebels cards. Uh, and just again, for folks that don't collect, yeah. When when we say vintage collection on a card, so that that's a figure. This is the card, right? So it's the the card stock that they're on, and the artwork. I don't know how much demand there is for a card that says Rebels on it in the general public. Yeah, like, you got to think about general public. Sure, collectors will buy these up, like in in bulk, but um, I'm not sure about the general public. You know, hanging on a peg in Walmart or or Target, whatever. I don't know how much they would sell. But uh, they, if folks would go out and watch those, it would be fantastic because um, uh, you get more history about Lothal. You get more history about the Darksaber, which is a, a lot of misunderstanding out there about the Darksaber. Watch Rebels. Yeah, they give you uh, some great, great content about all of that. So, yeah. Um, yeah. They did photo realistic. Okay, they did re-releases. I didn't see the re-release, but okay. I'm not that close to the Black Series line. So there you go. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I seem to remember there being a nice looking Hera that, that they did, but that's all I could recall. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, meta egg prediction. Uh, Ray will appear in the world between worlds in uh, during the series, uh, during the Soka series, I'm assuming he means. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, there's some interesting theories about the, I, I, I feel myself trying to avoid going down rabbit holes. Uh, Cause there's a, there are a lot of rabbit holes here that are opening up in the comments and I'm like, Oh, I want to say stuff, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I worry about it getting too disjointed. Um, if we go back to, to uh, rewatch rebels uh, it, it's, it's worth your time between now and when, even Kenobi comes out, but Kenobi and or and Ahsoka are all going to have very strong tie overs into Rebels. And it, it will do you uh, folks a favor, even if you've seen it, to rewatch Rebels because you'll see these things come up and you'll recognize them. You'll be better informed on what's happening. Not that they're required. It's just it will give you a, a, a more enriched viewing experience had you watched Rebels. Uh, beforehand so that's what i mean big time um, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness uh so let's see we wanted to talk a little bit about 
your latest articles on the Kenobi uh, uh, leaks and yeah. uh, catch us up to where you are and and maybe just this much of a clue. Now, again, for folks that want to go into uh, Kenobi, spoiler free, uh, this is not the place to hang out. This yeah. <laughs> we're, we're going to step into uh, some some space that might have uh, spoilers that you don't want to know. Uh, for people who just really want all of that to be uh, new, fresh, and and go in with your you know completely in the dark. Uh, I appreciate that, and I, I can uh, give you guys credit for wanting to do that. Uh, now is the time to find something else to do. <laughs> so, so we'll talk a little bit about the Reb, uh, about the Kenobi series. Oh, I wanted to tell you too about the work that's going on. They're, we're putting in the new floors. Oh, nice! And uh, so, what he's doing is he's cutting some of the subfloor structure, and uh, he's got this absolutely uh, obnoxious tool that he likes to use uh, to cut things, and it it, it makes a, a, a loud. You you all have heard it. It's terrible. And it was a murder uh, hornet. <laughs> it was, or or if we, if we wanted Star Wars, that we could imagine like an archer unit with one of those like little saw blades. You know, it comes out. It is absolutely uh, uh, terrible. But uh, uh, the, the guy here who does the work, his name is Nick. Imagine that, uh, Nick working at Saint Nick's. Uh, Nick? Anyhow, uh, yeah. <laughs> Nick is uh, the, uh, the friend of ours, the contractor doing the work. His dad hates that tool and refuses <laughs> to use it. <laughs> uh, his dad has been building houses for over 30 years and uh you know nick loves this tool he uses it for all kinds of cutting uh, but it makes a loud just obnoxious sound that we yeah. all hate <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh so to talk about yeah. kenobi well on i think it was l late last week or like the last one that i last article i r ran last week was about the third sister Yes. And that her name is um, Reva. Right. Which is inspired by Darth Revan from yes. Knights of the Old Republic. Yes. And yeah, and I, I've talked a little bit about her in some articles about how she, you know, is like pretty ruthless. The, the Grand Inquisitor is oftentimes um, sort of talking down a little bit at, at times to her. Like, you know, like if, you know, if anybody could find Kenobi, it would be me. <laughs> and not you and yeah. and then she's like you know she knows he's out there somewhere and um they're on like another kind of mission if you will like, I, i'm turned out to be too specific in certain ways but um they're they're like doing something else there and then uh basically um she 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 knows that that something's there and then she goes and she springs a a, a, a trap hoping to get a big fish like kenobi and that's that's why they capture Prince. That's why they have people capture Princess Leia. Yeah. And yeah. um, and it's to to like spring that trap, hoping that that somebody who Bell Organa used to know who's a Jedi will be the one to come and try try and help. Yeah. And, and, and this is something that you and I talked about before you you released this, that they use her name more than they call her third sister. Like we know them from Rebels as like the third sister, the the fifth brother, like that. They have those those ranking titles, but uh, you had mentioned they use her name, Reva. That, uh, that that's what I, I I've been told that that we hear her name and that it they call her Reva, and that it yeah. So and I and it's my assumption that it's because they don't want to say third sister all the right. time. Right, <laughs> you know what I mean. Right. It, it's not official. Yeah. It can get it can get a little bit uh, confusing. Hey, Trucker Mark is here. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Trucker Mark. Good to see you here. Uh, right, it's um, the the whole fourth brother, seventh sister, third sister thing is fine for folks. Uh, again, like if you watch Rebels, you know the Grand Inquisitor, and and they call them by those um, the sisters, brothers, sisters uh, titles. Uh, but it can get confusing. Why is do you have first, second, third, fourth, fifth, uh, like that? But uh, calling her by her name Reva, uh, and and just to make it clear, and I saw this, I saw this as well. Yeah, right. Yeah. Kathleen Kennedy, gender swap my Revan. Wow. 
there? Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, you, what you're what you're saying is uh, not that they are taking the Revan character and making it into the third sister, but rather it's a bit of a of a like Easter egg or you know kind of treat for fans. Look, we took inspiration from the name Revan, calling her Reva. And uh, it, we, we at this point we don't even you know how much similarity she may or may not have to uh, the Darth Revan character that folks know from Knights of the Old Republic, right? Yeah, and like with like what I know, I could I could definitely see where there where there are connections, where there's similarities, but at the same time, um, they could just be superficial. And since I don't know every single you know aspect of everything, I haven't seen it. So I can't 100% go, oh, yeah, she's a, you know, a one-to-one -one of Revan or something like that. I, right. I, I can't. But but it does seem like um, there are definitely connections. And my other question that I, I think I have right now and um, that I wanted to look more into is, is, is her name Reva, is that a name that she was born with or is that a name that she takes? Like when they become Inquisitors, do they drop their birth names? Like if Barris Ophi did become an Inquisitor, would she um, still be called Barris the Thirty Six Sister? You know what I mean? Like how would they handle that? You know, right, right, yeah. And and one question that has come up from time to time is if you are the uh, third sister and somebody kills the first brother, um, do you become the second sister? And then do they still keep calling you the third sister? You're like, I'm the second sister now, man. Right. Yeah, right? It's got to be annoying. <laughs> it's, right. a bad, it's a bad system. Um, right. Yeah, and maybe it, it's asking about Sun King. Yeah, do you know if he is playing the fifth brother for sure? Yeah. Yeah, he's playing the 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 fifth brother for sure. Looks fantastic, by the way. I, I got I to gotta tell you, I love the concept art for, for him from The Force Awakens. And I thought he looked pretty dumb in Star Wars Rebels. I was like, this is your translation of this beautiful art. This looks like a, 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 a big dummy with a, with an umbrella on his head. You know, it, it, it looked like a bad Mortal Kombat cosplay. No. I was like, this is, and, and I just, it didn't work for me at all. Uh, he looks fantastic. He looks oh, cool. Great. And yeah, that's very exciting. That's very exciting. And and Trucker Mark, thank you for the $4 super chat. Uh, he just got home and has to say hi. You know, I, uh, I drove a semi truck over the road uh, after I got out of the army. And uh, I know your sleeping schedule gets all jacked up. Uh, I prefer to drive like overnight because there's less traffic. You don't have to deal with rush hour, you know, to and from work. Uh, you can kind of avoid that thing. But uh, they also do a lot of road construction at night. And so you get home in the morning. You're worn out. Uh, it's time to take a nap. So uh, thank you, Trucker Mark, for the uh, super chat there. Uh, and, and Trucker Mark asked about Yoda, I think. Yes. And and so so I have a, a, a circumstantial Yoda bit. And that's not it. I saw you and McGregor driving this old car over the summer. And then um, a day or two later, when I was back in the same area, I saw the same car. And I was expecting to see you and McGregor in the car again. And then it was an older bald man. And I looked at him as I was driving. He was driving at me and we were we were both coming across the same light. And I was like, oh, I think that's Frank Oz. So um, very circumstantial. I, I, I cannot 100% say it was Frank Oz. I'm pretty freaking sure it was though. So uh, I think I think there's a chance. Nice. That, that's where I'm at on it. Nice. That's uh, yeah, uh, and it makes sense that Yoda would be uh, in the series. I think the question we have at this point is: Will Kenobi see Yoda in person, or you know, for Skype sort of thing? Well, that's and my again, question about Qui Gon. Is I know Qui Gon's in it, but I don't know if he's a voiceover or if he's if he's a physical ghost. Right, right, and, and I think uh, again, going back to Rebels. And, and that was and, that was that was a really big scoop, by the way. I just dropped it. Right I, yeah, I know you. Did. I, <laughs> I know. Like, I know he's in it now. Like I it was know. like, um, I, I, I've been told. <laughs> I was like, so. Jason, you just said something. I don't know that you've said. Uh, so, so I was like, I was going to try to wait and see if you really meant to say that. I yeah, like, I did. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. That is going to be huge. Uh, huge news for folks. 
uh, and uh, very, very exciting. So uh, in, in Rebels, we see Yoda talking to Ezra and talking to Cain and Jairus at the same time through the Force. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so we could definitely see um, that happening, uh, just them visiting through space, uh, uh, Kenobi not going to see him. But that is a huge, huge... Uh, Kenobi, Kenobi's getting around in this series. So so we don't have to think of it like he's on Tatooine. I mean, if if my, if my understanding and breakdown of everything that I've laid out is correct... Uh, when we when we get going, Kenobi is on Tatooine for either the first two episodes, but probably just the first episode. Very exciting, and uh, and I don't know who Molly is, but holy Molly! Uh, <laughs> no, I'm I'm teasing Meg. Um, uh, holy Molly, are you serious? Yes. Uh, so that is a huge leak. Uh, uh, we're going to get Qui Gon in Kenobi. Yeah. I think that a lot of people have been speculating and, and wanting. Uh, to know that. And I think it was uh, a lot of people were presuming that there would be some Qui-Gon uh, discussion in there, but to get the confirmation is a really big deal. Yeah. That's the really uh, deal. I, I was, I was like, I've been sitting on it for a little while. And like, um, like I said, I haven't been able to ascertain if he's physical or a voiceover at this point. And, uh, and I was reluctant to say it because I knew that once I said it, you're going to have one person who fakes it. Trust me, he's in it and he's physical. And one person's going to just double down on the opposite. Trust me, he's in it and it's the voiceover only. And one of them's going to seem right. But I'm just, I'm being honest with you guys that I don't, I don't actually know. And uh, it's, it's a, it's a hard one to fish out. So I'm not saying it can't be fished out or it won't be, but it's that that one is hard. They they did a Luke Skywalker on that one, from what I understand. Excellent. Uh -oh. Yeah, that's excellent. That's super, super exciting, and uh, and, and thank you for sharing that with us sure. uh, here. Uh, it, it, so there's there um, there are uh, uh, there's more information coming, my friends. So just to tell all of you who are kind of tuned in, uh, if you're not subscribed to Making Star Wars uh, YouTube channel, you should be. Uh, first of all, please. Se secondly, uh, Making Star Wars the the website, the actual mm -hmm. Making Star Wars like the uh, actual uh, side <laughs> or dot com if you want to be like Mark Hamill. That's what he calls it. And that's what he calls it. Yeah, yeah you uh, go there and uh, Jason will be uh, releasing additional stories. This is not the end. This is not all. Oh, oh, oh. No, I've been he, I've been saving I, them, guys. I've been saving I, them. I want to get I, past I, Boba, and now we're past Boba, so it's I, it's time. I heard you mention it was like uh, 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 sitting on an egg. Yeah. I, I, uh, you have more than one. You've got a whole nest yeah. of eggs, and there's only been a couple. There's a little <laughs> dozen, a little dozen of them. So <laughs> that's yeah. gonna be great. Um, and, and Meg said, calling it out. Grogu is in this show. Uh, uh, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. I I don't I I I if he is, I know where he would be, and right. I've been digging on that, and I haven't been able to get that that part either and so so i'm not saying he is for the record you know what I, mean? I, I i truly don't know i just know where the opportunity is and i'm not even saying that the opportunity was created for grogu just to be like very right. clear but there is a place where they could put grogu and explain some of grogu's backstory if they should want to but i don't know that they are yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey man come on I'm watching. I'm watching the chat, and 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 again, this is where I've got to be careful. <laughs> mm -hmm. Trucker Mark, uh, thank you for giving us uh, this transition question. Uh, it's a, or, or 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 comment. That's why I love Star Wars movies because George Lucas told the story with the same actors to keep the story real. Uh, there is a uh, there's been a lot of talk about this uh, book that came out and. Uh, George Lucas's concern about Grogu. And uh, he had a discussion with Dave Filoni. So first of all, it does kind of confirm to us that Dave Filoni and, and George Lucas talk on a regular basis. I think that's very, very uh, uh, comforting for a lot of fans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Meg, uh, you're, you're, you're the best. Uh, <laughs> so, why we're asking about Santa's transition. No, that's, that's a different story, different story. We're, <laughs> <laughs> but George Lucas uh, is uh, continues to talk to, to Dave 
Dave and George have a continuing mentor kind of uh, relationship. Uh, and so, uh, <laughs> Don Favroni. <laughs> Hey, everyone, I'm, I'm Don Favroni. All the ideas are mine. All the original ideas for Star Wars, they came from here. <laughs> that is, that's, a, that's the best gangster name ever. I also I mean, did the floors up in Santa's house. So if you're wondering, I that was my work. <laughs> and Brian Stone going back to a, a classic Santa uh, misspeak of, of, I, for the longest time and still yet. Uh, half about half the time, I'll I'll call them trans doshins instead of trans doshins. Trans, okay. Yeah, yeah. trans doshins. Um, so trans <laughs> yeah. Oh, very funny. Uh, hey, uh, Ducky just noticed uh, Meg's check mark. It's now official. Meg is a uh, a toxic blue check mark. I don't know. I, oh well, on 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 the old Twitter machine. Uh, uh, yeah, she hit a hundred thousand subscribers. So now she's she's got oh, a blue. Yeah, got it. She, nice. she's she's one of the one On of the YouTube. Hollywood elite. Yes. Nice. Yeah, yeah. She's <laughs> now, now now make now make gets to have people with with blue, with other blue check marks go. Oh, you know all these blue check marks and what they do when they have one themselves. <laughs> now you get to endure that, Meg. Have fun. It's, it's, <laughs> it makes you just go. <laughs> <laughs> it's great it's great uh and, and really really happy for her she, she yeah. deserves congratulations meg she deserves okay. all of it um mm -hmm. but but um uh oh there's so so the there's been a ton of youtube videos come out over the last couple of days uh taking a shot again at the sequel trilogy and the sequel trilogy characters especially ray uh and and her training and some of the comments that we've heard, and then this one as well. Um, yeah, <laughs> Meg, I'm the scary blue check mark that the fandom menace warned you about. There you go. Uh, so, uh, Diamond Joe, no, I did not see Theory's video of Boss eating his dad. What? Fantastic. <laughs> I, I don't. I I love it. I I don't I don't know what it what it means, but I love it. I do too. I do too. I do too. Uh, yeah. So now we can see Meg live on the next stream. Uh, no, she's she said that she would do a reveal of some sort, but she did say uh, recently, not a face reveal. Uh, she will reveal something to her uh, to her Patreon sub subscribers that she's working on that as uh, on what that what that uh, celebration of the hundred thousand subscribers. I know what it is. Like. It's it's. Meg could tap dance, and she's going to tap dance. It's well, be... the, <laughs> there's all kinds of theories. One is that she's really a robot, and mm -hmm. she's not a real person at all. Another is that she's really Kathleen Kennedy's uh, alter ego. Yeah, and so we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I think she's a holiday. I think she's Meg the Fourth. I think that's going to be it. <laughs> that she is a holiday. Yeah, yeah. there you go. Now, yeah. hundred thousand. The reveal. I am a holiday. The May the <laughs> Meg the Fourth. Uh, that would be great. Um, uh, so yeah, so there's a lot of of now talk about this comment applying to George Lucas's dislike for the sequel trilogy, and uh, and the treatment of Ray and perhaps even uh, Kylo Ren. But um, look, that horse has been beaten, and as Chillmonger says, people go too easy on the sequel. I I disagree with you, Chillmonger. I think the horse has been beaten. And it's been beaten and beaten and beaten. I listened to uh, to to uh, uh, Thor Skywalker over the weekend because he did a story on this as well. And he's he realizes that he's beat the dead horse, and then he went back and beat it again, and and, and he was doing it yet again. Uh, so I I, it, I know the actual <laughs> truth on this. Like I truly yeah. know the the actual truth on on the dead horse. And and here's what it is: George Lucas and Dave Filoni. Both actually aren't thrilled with with the sequel trilogy. Um, Dave Filoni, however, r respects it. That that's where they go off the rails usually. It's not like some I'm gonna undercut them, and it's you know it's like a soap opera. It's like ah, uh, it's like what? Why are you guys doing this? Like you're making this hard to make this right. And so so that that's where he that's where Filoni's coming from on it. And and he respects J.J. Abrams. 
Yeah. Doesn't he, he respects Brian Johnson. He he knows them. They're not enemies. They're friends. And is but it's like that was his movie. And they all ultimately very much respect like director's rights. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. It's a big thing at Lucasfilm that George Lucas set up since the very very start. So I don't know if you're going to see George Lucas straight up trash talk like. Fan, uh, um, um, the Rise of Skywalker for something like that. I don't think he's going to do it because I think he's like that was Abrams' movie to make and he didn't do it. So that's yeah. that, but that, that's where it comes from. But anyways, I I know enough people that would that are like where I'm coming from. They're like, yeah, he, he doesn't like it. He, no, he was yeah. he was not happy with the choices that those weren't his choices. And Filoni feels the same way. So, but it, but he respects the director. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He respects the, the, their work and the, their their vision, and uh, and so I'm sure Filoni. What Filoni's going to do is he's going to adapt it to make it more palatable to his and Lucas's vision to Star Wars. But it's not it's not a, a soap opera. He's not Susan Lucci behind the scenes going like, oh no, I'm going to get him. Now I'm going to get Rian Johansson. You know, it's it's just it's just so dumb. It's just yeah, so. Yeah. Star Wars fandom is dumb. Like no, not well, everybody here, but but collectively, like they believe anything and they're just yeah. dumb. It's just like that's not how movies are made. That's not how like, Hollywood operates. That's not, how, that's not how corporations work. Have you ever had a job? That's not how life works. That's that's 90210. That's not actually how you keep a job in Hollywood. It's right. just not. Right. And, well, and I, I, I talked about this the other day. There was an article I read more recently, and, and, and Dave Filoni was actually helping these directors with some of the content in those movies. So he may not have liked some of the choices they made, but again, he, the respect for it. And he contributed. People act like yeah. it, he wasn't involved. They kind of uh, shut him out. Or that uh, there's all kinds of just, as you said, dumb dumb narratives out there yeah dumb just completely ignorant and uh, people run with them and i think folks know who they are by now you've kind of figured it out right like yeah you should you should have if you, if you haven't by now you never are and you are our sweet sweet summer child and we love you still <laughs> there you go there you go <laughs> well well put my friend well put um I think there are some respectful, uh, respectable content creators who are still uh, critical. Thor Skywalker being one. Meg, uh, Meg as well. Meg, the, she's not she's not down on all of the sequel trilogy content. She yeah. loves Last Jedi, but me too. Uh, same kind. Me, me and Meg always line up. Me and Meg share the same general Star Wars opinions, which is nice because I watch her show every day. So I'm always like, yeah, I know Meg. <laughs> Get it, Meg. Meg, Meg but, knows. I, I love I love the sequel trilogy and I, you know and I realize that that puts me in a in a certain place but but look there are people who are hypercritical of the sequel trilogy Thor Skywalker is a good one who may beat that dead horse over and over again yeah. but it comes from um, it it's it's thought out it's thoughtful it's uh, you know well reasoned. Uh, his critic, his criticism comes from a good place where he wants just better Star Wars. He wants good Star Wars, and he's willing to judge each uh, piece on its own. Um, and 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 that's fine. I've got great respect for people that do that. But then there are others who make up nonsense uh, about the sequels being retconned or being uh, 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 thrown out or. Uh, you know, Kathleen Kennedy's been fired 17 times. I don't know. Like just, just stupid, stupid stuff. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's maddening because way too many of those are believed uh, by too much, uh, too much of the fandom. So it's just uh, <laughs> X-Wing. It's me. I make up the nonsense. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's like a LARP. It's like it's like they're they're LARPing their news, and and that's that's uh, scary, weird, and and dangerous as we've seen over the last couple yeah. of years. Uh, I, I've heard some of this too, Ducky. Uh, that the Lord of the Rings fandom is kind of ramping up; <laughs> like they're getting ready. They're 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 priming the pump, getting ready to absolutely lose their minds um, over the new series that's coming out on Amazon, and. And look, it's Star Wars doesn't hold the uh, the uh, market on 
crazy fans. Um, it's it's everywhere. And so don't don't think that the Star Wars cornered the market. There there are plenty of them in Marvel and Lord of the Rings and so on. So there you go. Um, <laughs> Joel Monger, this is hilarious. Uh, we all know Kathleen Kennedy only picks the colors of the title logos. Come on. <laughs> He's being funny. That's very funny. Um, yeah, there's there's um, it, it's just nonsense. And and um, there is another line of stories about the sequel characters continuing in additional movies or content. Um, have you heard anything on that front directly? Or are you just reading the same stuff we're reading? Nope i I have not. I haven't heard. It, I haven't had anybody go like, "Hey." heads up like this is a thing no, I, have, I haven't had any of that the but i the one thing i keep always go back to is i heard they were making 10 10 things at manhattan beach itself and so whenever i hear something about what's coming out next or whatever i'm just like oh okay maybe that's one of those maybe maybe it is true because no one told me what the other 10 things were i don't know what they all are so it's but there, there's there's definitely things coming down down the road that we have no idea about like like we pretty much know what's coming what's being made now for for into next year and they're prepping the stuff for the year after that we don't know what any of that stuff really is for the most part unless it's just like lando and and the things that we heard about maybe way early oh uh, yeah yeah well there's there's this uh, uh and chief thank you for the comment there uh i agree with you as well and and this was great uh i saw will morgan will morgan disney's about to do their own lord of the rings mando season three <laughs> oh, they've already done their own dune now it's time yeah. to do lord of the rings i do think that they've set up many of the pieces that could uh, lead to that kind of story i also think to bring up john watts uh that's up there uh in that title uh, that D Disney Plus series, they may be uh, kind of ramping up to do their own Harry Potter. What do you think? I think so. I think I, I've gone back and forth in this in, in my head. But when I I was with, hanging out with my daughter the other night, she's like, "Let's watch a movie again." I'm like, "Okay, let's watch a movie." And we we went on and we bought uh, Ghostbusters Afterlife. I took her to see oh, it yeah. in the in the theater, and as the cast casting uh, grid leaked for this new star Wars show. And as I'm watching ghostbusters, thinking about the story we talked about that, that very day, I'm like, this is a one-to-one -one of the ghostbusters afterlife cast, even down to the, to the Paul Rudd dude at the, you know, they have like four 12 year olds roughly. And then, you know, and then you have like, like the Paul Rudd. I was like, Oh wow. It's pretty much the same thing. So it, I kind of think, um, I kind of think it's the tales of the Jedi thing that we saw. Yeah, and, and X-Wing, this is what I was uh, uh, referring to as well. Yeah, I also yeah. saw that it was just one episode. He's directing one episode. So uh, the, uh, the, uh, the director is is in talks. I, I That's the part about the whole thing that makes me go, man, because I'm, I'm not claiming clickbait. I'm not throwing that out there or anything like that. But when pe when you say talks, that's a free pass just to be completely wrong. Yeah, so, and, so uh, and we have to we have to give them that if we're going to entertain it seriously. Yeah, and and love you, Meg. Thank you so much for stopping in, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Uh, Hi, Meg. Uh, yeah. Uh, so the, yeah, the the Watts one episode, maybe more, and the Stranger Things show. Uh, the reason I I said uh, their own Harry Potter is it's I think it could spin off. It, when I think of uh, like uh, a Young Jedi Knights or. Uh, that that was based around a school, and so mm -hmm. yeah, Stranger Things to me, I think they're just throwing that term out there. What what yeah. would be different? I, I'm like, it's a coming of age, like preteens, young teens, coming of age. Uh, uh, it's Ghostbusters Afterlife. It's the Goonies. It's it's all of it's it's anything where you have an ensemble of of cast of kid heroes. That are on, you know, a, a big the adventure world. world. Yeah. yeah. When, 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 and and hanging on the uh, Stranger Things uh, comment, that may just be what what somebody just said because it was their best analogy, and not even what they're actually doing. Like Stranger Things and Ghostbusters Afterlife, both to me say, "Oh, there's a paranormal element at play here." This but would be Star cool. But but I in like Star, it. go ahead. 
Oh, no, I like X Wing's comment here about mm -hmm. the drinker, like the demogorgons. Very yeah, funny. sorry, I interrupt this. Sorry. No, 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 that's okay. No, but when it, it comes, but when it comes to like Star Wars, um, you have the Force and the dark side, and so and so. I think if we, if we go that there's not if that's the actual like mystical paranormal aspect of it is the Force itself, then we could probably ascertain that these are Jedi and that there will be things that are mysteries and like that. But I think you end up with a with a with the kids from Ghostbusters Afterlife and a Harry Potter school. Like that's that's my reading of the evidence right now. Yeah. Yeah. I and, and it's something that Star Wars hasn't well it, it's it's set up perfectly for. Mm -hmm. Like we've had we've had little bits of it here or there. We've certainly had it in EU content. Uh Tales of the Jedi um is the rumored kind of space but you go back to the young Jedi Knights that's that's what it was. Uh, when I reread those novels, those were those were fun, preteen, coming of age, kids saving the world, like all of that's there. But now that we've kind of expanded into this Disney Plus uh, uh, series kind of thing, it would it perfectly lends itself for it. And you look at the series uh, and how well that genre does. Across the board. Yeah. Uh, well, well, and something that, that has been overlooked is George Lucas and Dave Filoni were going to launch a Clone Wars spinoff show about four or five little Jedi kids. And it, they ended up not doing it. Um, Cartoon Network didn't want to do it. And the episodes just became episodes of the Clone Wars, the ones with Gunji, the little, little yeah, 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 and all that. That was going to yeah. be a spinoff series. And they, they, sh they showed the pilot at um, Star Wars Celebration to test how people felt about it. And what, what they thought about it, because George Lucas knew that Harry Potter stuff, there's some cash there, baby. And, yeah, uh, and, it was, and yeah, it was a great idea. And so, and, and Filoni was a part of that. So if you ask me, I, I think Filoni's had these ideas maybe sitting around in his head the whole time. Well, we've seen evidence. Done. Yeah. I mean, and look at this was it. what they did with Ahsoka in uh, the Clone Wars, what they mm -hmm. did with uh, Ezra in the uh, uh, Rebels. And what they're getting ready to do and what they've started with Omega in the Bad Batch, right? You get those kind of characters thrown into a series, but we yet to have a, a group of kids like that, uh, you know, going forward. So yeah. uh, I think it, I think it makes sense. Uh, they've kind of peppered it in here and there. They've seen the success of the formula. Uh, look how popular Ahsoka is. Look how popular Ezra is. Yeah. Uh, and look how unpopular Omega is which is the setup to make her really popular later, right? <laughs> like all of those kind of things, they fit together. And then, uh, it, and, and there's X week. Don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> You've forgotten broom boy. I think that that's going to come along. Uh, to my, there were supposed to be kids with the force after order 66 or well, certainly. And that's part of what the whole, uh, inquisitor deal was. They were out to get out much like the Jedi order would seek out young force sensitives just because Order 66 happened didn't mean that kids quit being born force sensitive. Right. And so they would go out and find these kids and, and try to recruit them. And, and, and you know, I, I think that that was a part of the concept when Star Wars wasn't supposed to really come back and be as big as it was. The concept of midi-chlorians is I think that was going to be a test that the Empire was going to give to people. And then they would know if you were one of the ones they needed to exterminate. And then as midi chlorian concept wasn't popular and they wanted to continue with these stories, I think that just totally fell to the wayside. Yeah, and you look at the last video game uh, trailer from last week, week and a half ago, uh, where they've got this big machine that uh, it locates people with force sensitivity. And it, and it kind of creates this list for them to go out and get. So they've got this big machine. And uh, the, what they were trying to do there is keep the bad guy from getting the list yeah well the bad guy gets the list and leaves now it's like dun 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 <laughs> <laughs> you, you know what, I, what what i'm finding really weird right now about the about the high republic era on in general on, on the on the bigger scale than the publishing is they're apparently going like here's sort of a show aimed at at children and or teens maybe potentially and then you have like the political intrigue show aimed at like adults primarily and then you got this video game aimed at that's going to supposed to be huge, just aimed at like hardcore gamers, basically. And I'm like, where's the? It's like if it was a dartboard, they're kind of hitting all around the bullseye here. 
And yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, are they just trying to make like a like a Venn diagram, you know, or, or whatever, where it starts to like it starts to the overlap hits the bullseye a bunch of times, and that's is that the idea for this? Because it's very strange. I think you're right, and uh, I've been reading the High Republic novels, and they come out three books in each wave in in each in during the phase. So you had phase one, wave one, two, three. Uh, in, in each one, they have three: the adult, the young adult you know, the YAs and your children's. And um, as you describe it that way, that's how it feels to me. I hadn't been able to put my finger on it, mm -hmm. but uh, every single time I go through these waves, the first book I read, it goes well. The second book, just fine. By the time I get to the third one, I just, it's like trudging through mud. I'm like, not that it's a bad book. It's just, I don't know. It's just something doesn't land with me to read the same event from three different perspectives in yeah. a row from a different level, right? Like adult, mm -hmm. young adult, children, and whichever rep, whichever order, right? It doesn't matter if I read the, the uh, youngest to oldest or oldest to youngest, that last one is the one that I struggle with because it's like, okay, I, I kind of have an idea what's happening here. Although this is a new story, new characters, it's just hard for me to get hard for me to, to focus on it. I, I, yeah. I, I'm, and I'm reading the children's now and you know, it shouldn't take me uh, uh, two months to read it, <laughs> but I, I'm like read five pages at a time. And I'm like, okay, I just, I don't feel like reading anymore. And then again, yeah. it, it's not, I don't want it to come off as a uh, criticism of the writing or the story. Uh, it's just for me, the way that you just put this makes so much more sense. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, you've got the Vins that overlap. Each one overlaps the other one enough that it kind of, I'm like, okay, I'm looking for, I don't know. I, it's just, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm curious after we have both series out, do we feel like this was all to, both series in the game, if, it, if the game does come out. Yeah. Then we end up we end up like I, I'm I'm want to look back on it and be like was this was this really genius or was this really like a, a pipe dream that didn't work right you know right right um, wh what else I know there's there's a, a fairly I, 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 it's a downer kind of end of the day but uh, before we go to the Mike Porter. Uh, content for today. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Uh, what What are you uh, at the top of the hour? You're doing your regular show with uh, Sketchcraft, Rob. I kind of want to do a story today, uh, but I also have my kids home because of the holiday, and ah. so so right now I'm like looking at it. I'm like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to be ready for a show at 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 11 a.m. in 45 minutes right now. Right. So so I'm a little bit like, or so I'm a little bit like, do I just take the day off and? Dive like in the story. tomorrow, yeah, and then you know, go in tomorrow. Maybe not have typos for once. Maybe try that, <laughs> or or do um, one like you do every now and then at like eleven thirty uh, Pacific, mm -hmm. and it's like two thirty in the morning. I'm like, I'm not watching that. <laughs> <laughs> I got to I got to catch the replay. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah. All right. Well, uh, we do want to uh, mention Mike Porter. Uh, his dad passed away yesterday. Uh, I know Mike had taken some time and was at the hospital with his dad uh, several days. Uh, he would he would still leave us the Mike Porter dad joke of the day. And he was hanging out with his dad, spending some time with his dad in the hospital uh, just to be there with him. Uh, and last week we heard uh, Mike had said they moved him into a new nursing home. It was a really nice place. He really liked it there. And um, and and. And he was feeling somewhat good about it. And then today he said, uh, today's Mike, and, and I, I reworded this because it, uh, he put it in first person. This is uh, uh, <laughs> mentioning it. Uh, the dad joke of the day is dedicated to his father, an incredible father, family man and citizen, a great Christian man. Here's to you, dad. So uh, to Mike Porter's dad, Mike Porter, uh, we love you. Uh, yeah, his Mike. dad joke of the day. Uh, what did the dad joke say to the dirty joke? What it's here's some here's some soap. Time to clean up your act. <laughs> so, Mike Porter, uh, thank you for that. We love you so much, and uh, sorry to hear about your dad. Uh, yeah, it, 
and, and and the fact that it that you were so involved with him at, at especially at the end, I know that meant so much to him. Like I think about, I was thinking about all of that yesterday from the perspective of me and my son, and I couldn't help but think like your dad has to be totally proud of you and so happy that it that that he raised you to be such a good a good guy and that had to have made his life feel like you know what it was worth it because I made my border, you know, right. <laughs> and very well said, Jason. Thank yeah. you for that. Uh, so, you guys, uh, thank you all for being here. I've had a great time uh, talking uh, Star Wars uh, with you again today, Jason. Thank you for Same. making yourself available. And uh, you guys, uh, have a wonderful day. Prayers uh, and love to Mike Porter. If you see him out there today, uh, go out to his Twitter account, you guys. His Twitter mm -hmm. link is in the description here. If you've not followed Mike Porter on Twitter, uh, please just go out and, and uh, give him some love. Let him know that we're thinking of him here and how much we love him. Uh, so uh, we'd, I'd appreciate that from Santa. If you guys would go and do that, that would be wonderful. Uh, and so until next time, uh, you all, ho, 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 Merry Christmas, and may the force be with you always. Bye-bye.